Today we're going to talk about snapping hip syndrome. And as the name suggests, it's either a click or a pop or a snap that you feel or hear in your hip when you're moving your leg. And it's a pretty common condition for those of you that have had a neurologic injury that has impacted your walking. And the reason that I want to make this video is because I really want to help you understand what is causing the sound or this click that you feel by going over a little bit of the hip anatomy, why you might be hearing or feeling this pop. As usual, some of the physical therapy interventions that you can do for this, as well as some of the medical treatments that are commonly used for this condition with the end goal of giving you all the information so that you can make the best medical decisions for you and for your Body. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and reach your highest maximum level. Additionally, recently someone asked in the comments, why don't you ever talk about mindset stuff or why don't you ever do any videos on mindset? Because I always mention it in the intros to my videos. And I will say that a lot of the mindset stuff I go over in my newsletters or I talk about in my newsletters. So if you're not subscribed to my newsletters and you really Really want a little bit more of the kind of mindset side of this, definitely sign up for the newsletter that goes out every week. The link for that is in the description below. But now back to the topic of today's video and snapping hip syndrome. And again, it is worth reiterating the entire purpose of this video is so that when we get to the end and I go over some of the treatments for this, that you have a deep understanding of what is causing this click or this pop so that you can make the best decision for you and for your body. Let's first start with going over a little bit of the anatomy of the hip joint, starting with the bones. So the bones that make up the hip joint are the pelvic bone, the sacrum, and the femur or the lower leg. The important parts of the bones that are important to understand are the acetabulum, which is on the pelvic bone, the head of the femur, and the greater trochanter, which is the little bony protuberance on the outside of your hip. So again, that's all the bony structures that are relevant to our discussion today. Now, as far as the muscles are concerned, there are over 24 muscles that are involved with hip movement. The ones that are important for our discussion today are the gluteus maximus, the tensor fascia lata, and the iliotibial band. Now those are the ones that are relevant to this snapping hip syndrome. I might mention a few other ones, but as far as what's causing the snapping hip, those are the ones that we're going to focus on today. The gluteus maximus is kind of on the back side of the hip, the tensor fascia lata is on the side of the hip, and the iliotibial band is a thick fibrous band that runs from the tensor fascia lata all the way down to the lateral aspect of the tibia. Other things that are important to know about the hip joint is it is a multi-axial joint, meaning it moves in all directions, including flexion and extension, abduction and adduction, internal and external rotation, and what we call circumduction. So it is a very mobile joint. The thing that makes this joint unique is it's not only extremely mobile, but it is extremely stable. So most joints in the body usually sacrifice one for the other. So joints that are very stable are usually not very mobile and joints that are really mobile are usually not as stable. The shoulder joint being a prime example. That's why after a stroke, you've probably heard of of shoulder subluxations quite a bit. That is a partial dislocation of the shoulder joint. The reason that is very common in the shoulder joint is it's a very mobile joint, but it lacks a lot of stability. The hip joint is not the same. And in fact, dislocations of the hip joint are extremely rare unless you have a history of a major trauma to your hip joint or you had a total joint replacement. But if you've had no injury or previous surgeries on your hip joint, it's very hard to dislocate the hip. And that's relevant when we kind of get back on track with this snapping hip syndrome and some of the symptoms. So some of the symptoms of snapping hip syndrome are that most people will describe they either hear or they feel a pop or a click or a snap when they are moving the hip forwards and backwards. 
Some people have described to me that they feel like their hip is actually dislocating when they move it. So the reason what I said about the stability is really important is, again, there's a really good chance that you're not dislocating your hip, even though it may feel like that. And the reason that's so important is because if you think your hip is dislocating, subconsciously, you're just not going to move it. So if you haven't had a recent fall or you haven't had some direct trauma to your hip joint, you most likely have not dislocated your hip or you're not dislocating your hip when you've, you're moving it. And if you haven't had any previous surgeries to your hip joint, even though it feels like it's dislocating, you're most likely not dislocating your hip. So now, then what is causing your hip to pop or snap or have this sensation that it's kind of popping out and popping in? Well, it has to do with just kind of muscles and tendons not being lined up appropriately. So I talked about those muscles earlier, the gluteus maximus, the tensor fascia lata, or TFL for short, and the iliotibial band, or what we call the IT band. So the gluteus maximus originates kind of on the backside of that pelvic bone and the sacrum, and it attaches to the outside of the femur bone and also has some attachment to the iliotibial band. And then the tensor fascia lata is on the outside of the hip. It also attaches to the pelvic bone or originates on the pelvic bone and then attaches to that iliotibial band that I talked about right above the greater trochanter. So remember earlier I said that greater trochanter was going to be pretty important. So these two muscles form kind of like a V. So the part of the gluteus maximus and the TFL merge together to form that iliotibial band. So now that we understand the anatomy a little bit, what causes snapping hip syndrome? Well, if there is tightness or shortening in the iliotibial band or the gluteus maximus, when you flex and extend your leg or you bring your leg forward and backwards, what happens is that iliotibial band rolls over that greater trochanter and causes that little pop or that little click that you hear. In severe cases, it will kind of be audible and will actually feel like when it pops over that greater trochanter, it will feel like something's like popping in and popping out. But it's really just that fibrous tissue r running across that greater trochanter. So why is this so common in someone that's had a neurologic injury that's impacted your walking? Well, there's a few reasons. And of course, if you've been following me for a while, you probably already know what the root cause is going to be uh, for most of the conditions that I talk about that are related to a stroke or a brain injury. It partially is due to spasticity or abnormal synergy patterns, primarily a flexor synergy pattern. So if you're someone where your leg has a tendency to flop out to the side, well, if your leg stays flopped out to the side for long periods of time, your gluteus maximus is going to become shortened. Remember that attaches to that iliotibial band and that could potentially shorten that iliotibial band and cause this snapping hip syndrome. The other thing that can cause this is if you have weakness in the hip muscles. Remember, I, there are 24 altogether. I only mentioned a few. But remember, there is a lot of different movements that occur at the hip joint. If you have weakness in the abductors or the muscles that move the leg out to the side, you can develop what we call a Trendelenburg gait, where the opposite hip actually drops. So imagine that you have a house on two pillars. Those are your legs. The roof of the house is your hips. When you remove one of those pillars, you almost have to have something on the outside of the other side of the one pillar to keep that roof level. That's your hips, to keep your hips level, right? So those are the muscles, those are the hip abductors. That's what helps to keep our hips level when we pick one leg up. So on your involved leg, when you're standing on it, if you remove that other pillar, so if you remove your other leg to step it forward and you don't have strong abductors, then that other side of that house is going to drop. So when that other side of that house drops, it adducts the hip. 
So when that adduction happens, there is more force of that iliotibial band, because remember that runs on the outside of the hip, kind of pressing into that greater trochanter. So you will feel that popping as you bring that leg forward and backwards. Now the other reason this can happen is if you have an extensor synergy pattern. So if you have an extensor synergy pattern, again, remember I've talked about this a lot, just Put in the YouTube search bar, Rehab HQ and Abnormal Synergy Patterns. I've done a ton of videos on this. But if you have an abnormal extensor synergy pattern, leg extension usually links up with adduction. So when you go to stand on that leg, there is a possibility that you're getting an involuntary adduction. Again, what does that do? It puts more stress or tension on that iliotibial band when you bring that leg forwards and backwards. So for example, if you're standing on your leg and you're bringing your body over your leg. So technically you're you're moving that leg from extension to flexion you potentially could feel that pop during that kind of phase of walking if you have that involuntary adduction so again just to review if you're standing on the leg and you have any type of adduction that can cause your hip to feel like it's popping when you're walking. If you have tightness in your external rotators, your legs always flopped out to the side, that gluteus maximus is shortened, that'll pull and put more tension on the IT band. That can also cause a pop when it goes across that greater trochanter. So now before we get into the treatment, it's important to understand that many, many times snapping hip syndrome is misdiagnosed as greater trochanteric bursitis. So just to add a little bit more kind of nuance to this picture, there is a bursa that sits on the outside of the greater trochanter. And what a bursa is, is a fluid filled sac that prevents muscles and tendons from rubbing on bony prominences. So wherever there's muscles or tendons that will be moving near a bony prominence, you usually have a bursa there. And yes, there is one on the greater trochanter in particular to prevent the IT band from rubbing on the greater trochanter. So a lot of times if you go to your doctor and you describe the sensation, in my experience, they will diagnose you with greater trochanteric bursitis. And again, that's just in my experience. I don't know how common that is in other parts of the world, but that is my experience. The difference between the two, one difference, is potentially there will be pain associated with greater trochanteric bursitis. And typically, snapping hip syndrome is annoying, but it's not really painful. But the other kind of layer of nuance to this is I do believe in some cases when people hear that snap or that pop or they feel like their hip is dislocating, they will initially tell me that it's a pain in their hip and the deeper I investigate and I ask them to describe the pain, burning, throbbing, stabbing, I try and kind of get them to give me words to help identify the type of pain, they can't really come up with anything other than the sound or the feeling. So really pay attention to that. Sometimes we can confuse something that makes us nervous because we think something's being damaged with something that's actually creating an unpleasant sensation. So that's also very, very important is really trying to identify and make sure that you can explain to your doctor accurately what's going on. Is it just something that's making you nervous because it feels like your hip is dislocating or is it something that's causing burning, stabbing, throbbing, aching? Any of those types of words would be some, some kind of a unpleasant sensation that will be helpful information for your doctor. So now what is the treatment? If we go back to those root causes, the treatment is basically going to be to stretch, 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 and walking quality. There is no way to remove that popping. Now remember again, you're probably not damaging anything, but it is annoying to have that pop. But if you really want to get rid of that pop, walking quality is so, so, so important. In order to get some slack, in that IT band so that it is, does not pop over that greater trochanter every time you walk or stand on that leg, 
it is so, so critical that you learn how to walk with your hips level. So if you think that your snapping hip syndrome is because of your hips not being level, because your hips are adducting or involuntarily come, coming together, I would spend some time every single day working on stance control, starting with a heel lift, going to a foot slide, and then going to a forward backward step. Same series of activities that I've shown several times on this channel to regain the ability of loading that leg, meaning straightening that knee out, and inhibiting or preventing that adduction from coupling up. You need to uncouple those. If it's coming from an extensor, an abnormal extensor synergy pattern, you want to uncouple that. You want to be able to extend your leg without that adduction. So you want to kind of gently load that leg while simultaneous, simultaneously unloading the other leg and not allowing your legs to adduct. So in other words, keeping those hips level as you do those activities. If you move on and you try and completely unload the other leg and the hip drops right away, then you need to go back to a easier version of unloading that leg. So either a heel raise or a little slide with a furniture slider. In addition to the gait training or working on that quality movement, you also want to stretch, stretch, stretch. You want to stretch the IT band and you want to stretch the glutes. And the leg that we're stretching, which is the top leg, you're just dropping down off of the mat or off of the surface that you're laying on. And again, that's stretching that tensor fascia lata and that IT band. And just another angle for you to see how that leg is dropping off of the mat, really elongating the muscles on the outside of this hip. So the leg that we're stretching is the leg closest to the wall. You're gonna cross the non-stretching leg across the front. Most of your weight is on this front leg or on this non-stretching leg or non-working leg. And then you're just gonna lean your hips into the wall. Again, we're trying to stretch the outside of this hip that's facing closest to the wall. And then you just wanna hold that 30 to 60 seconds. So now that we've gone over some of the kind of physical therapy treatment for it, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that is the medical treatment for it. So an extremely common medical intervention for this, and again, keep in mind, I am not a medical doctor. You listen to your doctor. I just want to give you as much information as possible so that you can be part of that decision-making process with your doctor. So a common medical treatment for this is a cortisone injection. Now, again, I am not a medical doctor, but I'm just kind of giving you what exactly a cortisone injection does. A cortisone injection helps with inflammation, and it helps with pain. It does not help with all of those root causes that I just went over. So if it is a bursitis, yes, a bursitis is an inflamed bursa, and maybe a cortisone injection, because it helps with inflammation, might temporarily relieve that. If it is just snapping hip syndrome, because you have a shortened or a tight iliotibial band, a cortisone injection does not lengthen an iliotibial band. A cortisone injection does not improve the quality of your walking. And that's important just so that you know a cortisone injection does not fix the problem. Now, if you have been doing all of the stance control activities that I talked about in here and you still 
cannot get those hips level, which does happen. Abnormal synergy patterns in some cases and does not go away. And in some cases, you just can't get that those muscles on the outside of that hip strong enough to support your body weight when you pick your other leg up. My next recommendation would be if you are at least two years out from your injury, I still believe within that first two years, you have a ton of potential and you just want to keep working hard at getting that connection back with those movement patterns. But if you're beyond that two year or three year point, and you are still having this snapping hip, the next thing I would suggest is to go back to an assistive device. I think it is a valuable tool, especially when you're walking longer distances, to help not have that annoying click or that annoying pop. But also the other reason for that is if you are getting that click or that pop, without the assistive device, it probably means you have some postural deviations going on further up the chain and you will start to develop possibly some tissue damage in other areas. So I would say at that point, it might be a good time to start thinking about maybe using an assistive device intermittently just to get those hips level when you are walking. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. If you want to see some exercises throughout the week, head on over to Instagram and follow us over there where I post one to two exercises every week just to kind of add some variety to your home exercise routine. I enjoyed spending time with you all and I will see you all in the next video. Have a good day.